Hey, welcome to the uh, to this week's midweek how the non paranormal part of the From the Shadows podcast in the pre Memorial Day weekend show. Uh, next week will be a rerun. We'll just let everybody know, but it'll be a good one. I'm going to pick a good one out. Um, but you, you sounds like you're starting the Memorial Day weekend early. You mean because I was in the pool? Because you were in the pool, yeah. I that's because I work like a dog all day, and and <laughs> that's the easiest way for me to get to to get clean or just to get refreshed. <laughs> well, I that's that's like the, the the cool down before I get out and get in the shower. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times, if you're hot and you go take a shower, the shower. To, to, to yeah, quote and you start George sweating within, within two yeah. minutes. Yeah, to quote George Costanza, the shower didn't take. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, is that what he said? Yeah, yeah, the shower didn't take. I took it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, so it must have been, it, it must be nice to have a, have a pool to get in and get refreshed. It's not bad. Uh, you know, my nephew texted me over the weekend. He never texts me unless he wants something to ask me pool questions. And, hey, how much your pool cost? And I told him. And, you know, we texted about, you know, I said I'd do some things different and some things the same. And, and he's like, he's, he's whining. God, I just hate that's such a waste of money. That's what he tells me. I hate to just, you know, his wife's on him, the kid's on him to get one of these got pools. I'm sorry, I'm writing a password down because I had to reset my password nine times in the last 40 hours. Anyhow, <clears throat> and now this is a kid. He's texting me from Pensacola, Florida, where he's down there vacationing. Uh, who knows what his Airbnb cost? He's driving a hundred and ten thousand dollar high country Duramax crew cab dually, and has done and very the, well for himself. Hmm? And the pool is a waste of money. And I, yeah, exactly. Well, I, that's what I texted him back. I said, you know, it's less than a new pickup. <laughs> and he said, well, the pickups make me money and hauls my fat ass around. What he said. So, <laughs> I, I well, you know. Well, you know what? I just I just saw somebody put a put a post had a post on Facebook where they were putting their pool up for rent. So they so they had a pool in their backyard, and if you when they weren't using it, if you wanted to use it for a pool party, a birthday party, or just to come over and swim, they're renting it out by the hour. See, what's the liability on that? I don't know. I hate to sound like one of those guys, but I'm going. First of all, I don't want a bunch of strangers in my house. Well, I don't even want a lot of the people I know at my house. <laughs> That's why I couldn't do an Airbnb or, you know what I mean? I, I My brother and this nephew, they Airbnb stuff, they travel, they do a lot for work, and then they're Airbnb. And I don't want to stay in somebody's house that I don't know. You know what I mean? And I think me and you've had this question, this conversation. I don't want to stay in somebody's house that I don't know, and I don't want people staying in my place, you know? Well, I I mean, most people that do Airbnbs, they're not renting out their main residence. You know what I'm saying? They're they're they own a house somewhere else, and you know, it's just like uh, it's like having a vacation cottage or something like that. The Airbnb we did in Lexington, Kentucky, was not those people's main residence. I don't even think they probably ever stayed there. You know, it's just an investment property that the way to make money is to. You know, rent it back out, I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess. I keep reading uh, that all that's going to crash. Why do you? Why do you? Because the Airbnb market, you know, uh, people that, God, they don't want, people don't come here for a finance thing. So let's, let's, let's don't get on that. Let's talk about wine, women, and song, Canada, ice fishing, super yeah. fans, or complaints. That's what I want to talk about. I don't want to talk about the world because the world, you know, like old Don Williams said, they're all going to be what they're going to be. You know what I'm saying? It's so, all going to be what they're going to be. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. All gonna be. So I've decided to step off this world and 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 do my own thing. So okay, okay. So so no finance, no nothing. No, no. We're not talking about finance into the world or anything else. 
Mm-hmm. You you had a super fan from Idaho you talked to today about something yeah. earlier. Who yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, holiday I, coming up. I was, I was just talking to Lindsay. I think I mentioned her a couple weeks ago. She's uh, she's a super fan. She's got some real cool paranormal stuff, and uh, she got sick. So uh, I was just talking to her before we got on about uh, scheduling her uh, her interview for her ghost. She got some ghost stories and stuff, and uh, she's uh, she's a hu- huge fan of the house. So she was, you know, she was impressed that you had a pool. I told her you were oh, in the pool. My God, he's a stock tank. <laughs> I had to shoot the cows back, you know. <laughs> oh man, yeah, she was impressed. So I put some so, firewood uh, up against it, make a hot tub out of it in the winter time. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a water tank for for some cattle, huh? That's mm-hmm. all. That's all. Or hogs, if I'm in it. Um, speaking of that, I got I, I got to clear the air about my buddy Ed. Okay, okay. What he is- reached out to me, and he's kind of. I don't want to say he's upset, but he he kind of he works very hard to maintain his world. Okay, okay. All, right. all right. And he said I made him sound like a hillbilly. <laughs> I don't remember you making him sound like. I a hillbilly. guess when I was talking about him having to ride the horse to town to get enough signal to download the show, <laughs> it made him. It made him. It made him feel. Like he made some bad choices in his life. So, so what I want to, I want to clear the air. He's really as close to a real life. If you watch Yellowstone, he's as close to real life Rip as you're ever going to meet. And he doesn't ride a horse. He drives a new King Ranch Power Stroke diesel Ford pickup uh, or a first gen Dodge. It's all been redone. It's worth more than my whole fleet. And, and he 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 when he's not wrangling cows, he's whining and dining with uh, with politicians and governors and million and actually like billionaires of all ilk. And he joked he got a ticket the other day right, listening to the howler in South Dakota. And he texted me and said, "Hey, you got any connections in South Dakota?" And that was inside. I better. I don't even know if I should go where I'm going about to go. But I t- replied back and I said, "Well, I think you know the governor." <laughs> and he said, "Yeah, but she's in enough hot water over that dog deal that I ain't going to ask her to fix a ticket for me." So, <clears throat> anyhow, <laughs> he's really not a hillbilly. Okay, that's all I was going to say. Well, I find it interesting that Ed was upset that. He felt like you made him sound like a hillbilly, but he he didn't call to say, "Hey, I didn't mean to be so mean to Shane." <laughs> well, that's because, hey, you know, <clears throat> he doesn't care about you, Shane. Oh, uh-huh. that's Thanks the bottom it. line. You know what Thanks I'm saying? It. Thanks. Bottom, it. Hey, he'll take he take you to the train station if he has to. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, it's not personal; it's just business. That's that's right. That's, that's right. right. You know, I was going to swing back. I got a bone to pick with your buddy uh, Miller in them. What, How come they didn't invite you or me to go to Kane Con Film Festival with them this week? Because, uh, you know, I don't, there's a lot of people I know at the Con's Film Festival. Were they there last week, last year when I was there? Yeah, yeah. He goes every How, year. He, goes How, every... he didn't reach out to me. I I don't know, because he's... You know, he's he's a little higher brow than us, I think. Well, I tell you, I walked around Monaco and didn't see him, so he must have stayed over there with the poor people in cons. Because <laughs> you didn't you see know. Bronzi? You didn't see Bronzi over there? At Monaco, I didn't see him. Uh, I've seen Bezos and some people. I saw um the girl that was in the movie with me and the judge that's coming out soon. She's she was over there. Um, Brielle. Um she was over there and I mean, staying in a very nice place and, and stuff. So, and I don't know what she goes, what she's over there for is, but as an actress and stuff, maybe she's just trying to, you know, talk to producers. Oh, I bet. I bet. Oh, oh no. I stay in a bad hotel. So we stayed in a bad hotel. I stayed in a bad hotel. Now, now, now I felt like you, I felt like you this weekend. I got, I had the privilege of going to a 90th birthday party on Saturday. Oh, how was it? I went to a 92nd one. 
A 90 second one. Well, mm-hmm. I Christie's aunt, and this is, it's a long convoluted thing, but her dad's oldest brother was married to this lady, not Aunt Nina. He was a pilot uh, for American Airlines, I think. And they ended up, he ended up in the 60s getting transferred out to California. So that would have been a great place in the 60s, wouldn't it? They wow. Had, I think they lived like in San Diego. I mean, Arizona. you, oh man, I hope they bought a house and a bunch of real estate then because it'd be worth 50 times what it was. Well, well all of Christie's cousins, I, the, I had never met any of these but one. She and the one, had has since moved back from California to Indiana, and then we we had a thing at our. How do you go from California to Indiana? It's where her husband's family. Is I from. mean, that's a so. change of fortunes. <laughs> anyway, but, uh, but they, uh, but all these cousins, I I've heard about them, seen about them. This is the first chance I got to meet them, and uh, they came back. Now the uncle, bad you know bad story. He left his wife and left the kids and. He ended up actually back in Ohio, and I think he died. Oh, he didn't go back to get him. Didn't go back to get him. Oh, okay. Kind of left him. So, yeah, yeah. But, Uh but you know, Chris, you know, Christy and her mom, and they're, you know, the family's tight, and they, you know, even if that wasn't the one they relate were related to, they still, you know, she's still their family. Yeah, aunt um, for life. Yeah, aunt for life, and ninety years old, and I, she just bought herself. They told me a new BMW, drives around. Drives around wherever. And she came over and she did not know who I was. And she stood there. She kind of up. Kinda, no, she didn't try to pick me up. But she gave me the eye. Like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. who are you? Who are oh, you? That's <laughs> not the eye I was thinking. No, no, not that. Not that eye. But it was great. Christy's uh, one cousin, Mike. He's, uh, he's uh, actually a professional musician in California. And he, he, uh, Saturday after the party, they came back to our house, and he sat around, played some, uh, played some guitar, sang. Show him some songs. Do you try to get him cut, look at one of your songs. No, but he isn't no. a he isn't a ZZ Top cover band out there, and uh, he's pretty talented. He's a pretty talented dude, but uh, they're uh, it's a, I guess it's a pretty good ZZ Top cover band. Is have part- you ever heard a bad ZZ Top cover band? Well, you know, I mean, they're pretty good. Like the guitar. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But have you ever heard of a bad one? I'm sure there are. Right. Oh, come on. I haven't heard anything in ZZ Top and Bad in the same conversation <laughs> in my life. But he was telling me there was, uh, they got invited to this uh, cover band festival in Texas, I believe. And they were the ZZ Top. And he said it was just all these, all these cover bands from all over for you know different musicians and i asked him if he'd ever run in have you ever seen little kiss oh yeah i know, I know who you're talking about but the little the little huh? people the little people that are kid dressed yeah, up yeah the, i'd say midgets so some of my listeners are want to hear well, I, midgets. I, I okay. said midget yeah, it's a and, midget cover band and they're dressed I, up like kiss i said midget and they told me that was not proper who said that who's they well when I said that, I, when I the asked the band members or somebody else, no, somebody else said that's not how, how you refer hey, to them. And I'm like, I don't on, even dude. know anymore. Do they? You can't talk in hieroglyphics and, and wokeness down here. We we're a simple show for the simple people in this world. Okay, <laughs> they've been known as midgets for all of eternity, and 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 you know, well, they are little people, right? Yeah, but goddamn, they... so's uh, you know, to, to me, any dude under five five is little people. But that don't mean they're midgets. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's how I grew you know what up. I mean? But here's, so you, I want that extra pizzazz. So the that truck drivers out there know what you're talking about because they might not, they might not put two and two together. They might just think I just mean, you know, Italians or something. They're little people. Mexicans <laughs> are little people. Oh you know? gosh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You can't, you, can't, you can't leave it up to the listener, man. You got to fill in the blanks to their imagination. Is that what you're saying? No, you can't leave it to their imagination. You got to you got to cross the T's and dot the I's, or they might think, you know, all these Hondurans. I mean, this place got hey, okay. This is a good question right here. All right, because you're right. smarter than me. You went to big boy school. Okay, if there's eight million Central Americans they've let in in the last couple of years. If they're half the size of an American, because they're Hondurans and shit, is that really eight manners or like four million people? 
I can't you know, even believe just displacing, it. They're just displacing half the food, half the energy, <laughs> half the space, right? But, but I just want to point out, they're probably doing twice the work. So is it really like 16 million people? You don't know that. I, look, I, I think I think that's the old fashioned. I think that's let's let's change topics, but I think that's the old fashioned illegal immigrant. I think the late model illegal immigrant gets a cash card. They don't have to go down to Home Depot and stand in the parking lot with a sign that says "We'll work for food." Yeah, but the the and I don't know if they're illegal immigrants. You better stop. I don't know if they're illegal. You're going to run this show into the ditch right now. You already did. The truck you're about driver's to take something. me off the chain. I'm going to say some shit, and it's going to make you uncomfortable. Well, anyway, you mentioned truck driver. Yeah. And so I was going to tell you. The lifeblood of this country. The lifeblood of this country. Yeah, they are. And, um, but I'm reading. Um, so our producer, Phil, because he probably won't listen to this. Yeah, he probably doesn't. He doesn't actually listen to us talk. But our producer, I'm Phil, is, no, is producing a movie called Blood and Rust. And it's available. Blood and Rust. Blood and Rust. It's like me working on putting shocks on my truck last week. I know exactly what this movie is about. <laughs> Go ahead. It's a vampire movie. And I'm going to read. I'm going to audition for a part in it. And the part is a truck driver. And so I've been... I've been a truck tossing. driver? How come y'all didn't call me about being a truck driver? This is what pisses me off. You guys never invite me to be in the movies. Is it because you're afraid I'm going to steal your thunder? No, but you don't live in Ohio. It's one day. It's one you day. Don't think you think I can drive to Ohio for a day? You're not driving to Ohio for one day to Maybe. to sh- to shoot to shoot this movie. No, <laughs> I'm barely I'm barely going to be able to drive to go shoot it if I get the part. <laughs> but it is. It'd be a great part for you. It'd be a great part for you. So I so I thought you know I'm gonna I'm I'm digging into my Ozark Howler to to read. Why? Because it's supposed to be a. I mean, is just what's the background on the truck driver? Is he just a truck driver? I mean, is he a union teamster truck driver? Is he a truck driver for the post office, or is he a truck driver for the hog market down at? Uh, <laughs> he's a truck driver. Cleveland. He's a truck driver who's hit a deer, so he's hit a deer. The deer's laying in the road, and the woman. There's a woman that works for the county that's come to clean up the deer. So yeah. how come he's a truck driver? He's a deer. They don't even stop, dude. They're in the next. States yeah, already. but he's he actually is taking the deer home. He's going to take the deer home. He's one of those he guys. Is. He take the deer home and eat it. Like a guy lives on my back mail route. School, back in old school, I know. A guy lives on that. Uh-huh. Guy, guy lives on my route. Rob Zaring. He's, yeah. he's great. Cooks me stuff all the time. Makes best egg rolls. He's making me. I think tomorrow he told me he'd have some bratwurst for me when I walked by on the route. But he, uh-huh. he's one of those guys that the sheriff will call and say, hey, deer got hit. It's still good. You want it? And he'll go out and get it, and he'll he'll clean it and get it butchered and turn it into, like, a, a hamburger. Or, you just say gourmet food. Gourmet food, because that guy can cook his butt off. And anyway, so so that's the deal. That's the, the, the deal on this. And the truck driver ends up getting killed by a vampire. So... I don't. I haven't seen that part, but I'm assuming because the guy's not now. He's not an endearing character, really. So who kills him? A vampire. But I don't know. I've oh, seen that because I was I'm telling a... my kids the other day when I was on the patrol, we had a gal on 63 just north of Columbia. She hit a deer to train tracks, and you don't know where that's at, but anybody else does. Just north the, the new Bass Pro, and she got out to check on deer and got hit by a car. So you hit a deer, you need to keep going. I, that would be awful, though, to to get, get hit out by there. A car? Well, it'd be awful to get hit by a car, but it'd be awful to hit a deer and then get out to check on it and then get hit by a car and yeah, kill yourself. You know, I tell you what, some of these girls, especially, they just they want to help the world, don't they? And they just don't think they just don't know how bad the world really is. I've seen some crazy. I've seen all kinds of craziness. I seen an old man that walked to the mailbox. He didn't have his hearing aids in. One of the first pedestrian fatalities I ever saw was an old man that walked across the street and got the mailbox and he turned and I guess was looking down at the envelopes and stuff, stepped back in to walk home and got hit by a 
speaking of a first gen Dodge, first generation Dodge, big old D350 diesel when they first come out in like 92, 93. Bang. Killed him right there. Are you? No. Okay. This is imagine a cut. Imagine almost like you'd see a guy now looking at a phone walking. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess well, he pulled the mail out of the mailbox and turned on his heel to walk back to his house because the guy said, I was slowing down because I saw him and I and he moved to the middle of the of the of the road and the guy takes a step or two and still walks in front of me and gets hit. Knocked him out of his shoes. Now remember this. Knocked him out of the shoes. Okay. Done another one in Cold Junction. And he was a he wasn't a midget, but he was a special needs dude and he had a walkman with wired earphones, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, oh yeah. He was walking down the train tracks. Oh, no. And he got hit by a train, and it knocked him out of his shoes, too. Wow, how loose are your shoes to get knocked out of the... Maybe you just get hit that hard, I guess. I don't know, man. I don't even know why I got in that... I mean, it's pretty terrible stories to tell (laughs) on a comedy show, but (laughs) shit happens. well, the the crazy thing is, is my buddy who's uh, high up in the highway patrol here, his first fatality he ever went out on was a guy, an old guy, crossing the road to get the mail. There you and go. Got, and got hit. And he, the guy didn't come back in. And the the wife. Went to look for him or check on him? Well, call, like called, I guess he was, and said, hey, I don't know what happened. My husband went out. <clears throat> and they sent a patrol out there. Here he was in the ditch. Locked him. She couldn't the... walk out there herself. I think she was she was too old, and it was at night or something. Yeah, I don't remember the specifics, but but it was just fun. It, it was just weird that you said the first. Uh... Yeah, that was probably. I don't know if that was the first fatal. It wasn't the first body I'd seen, but I think that was the first fatal accident thing I'd seen. Uh huh. Wow, I can't, uh, I can't picture. And then that. the first one I worked, where I was the lead guy on, was a dude in a three wheeler, one of them custom Harley Davidson three wheelers. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was, they were driving on 54 down here in Cannon County, south of where I live, and the road's two lanes. And and now there's a big fancy horse farm fence and stuff I could show you, but it's got a big grass field, kind of a valley looking thing. Uh, it opens up, you know, you're driving like in the woods and all of a sudden there's this big old valley full of green grass. And the dude behind him, so the truck in front of him, F-150, remember them in, in the mid-90s, those Ford Lightnings, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, and yeah, yeah. Like stripes and yellow and, and blue right. and red. Yeah, so Ford Lightning short bed stops in front of him to make a left-hand turn so he's waiting for approaching traffic, you know what I mean, to make a left-hand yeah. turn. And I guess the guy on the three-wheeler was an older gentleman, and and the guy behind him said there was a bunch of turkeys out in that field, and I guess he was just looking at all those turkeys and hit a, ran into the back end of a basically a park truck, a stop truck, going 60, 65 mile an hour, no brake, no nothing. And, and he hit that F-150 so hard that it was spun around facing the opposite direction. You know, mass times velocity, that three-wheeler hit it so hard, it spun it around. Oh and he flew 60, 80, 90 feet, I don't remember, over this F-150 down and ended up on the side of the road ditch on the right-hand side. Never moved oh a muscle. Hmm? Oh, my gosh. And that was, you had to come up on that and were the lead guy. Yeah, you know, when they called Star 55, you know, me and uh, the guy I was working with, who's still working, we were the two guys, you know, that rolled up there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, are you prepared for something like that, or are you, oh, you just? I, I mean, I, what, what do you mean? Are you prepared for it? It's a lot of paperwork. The death notation <laughs> is a terrible thing. You know, I worked a double. I was telling my son this the other day because we were driving down the road. I worked a double one morning, double fatality on a Monday morning. And these kids had a. I don't think it was a Ford Escort wagon. What kind of Ford wagon? Maybe a Taurus or Tempo wagon. Oh yeah, something like that. That sounds something like right. it. You remember the how they had a automatic shoulder belt, but you had to physically put the lap belt on. Remember how they had that contraption? Oh, uh, I think I had that in my uh, Nissan two forty. Yeah, you know what I'm That's, talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early morning, they 
you know, ambulance gets toned out. I saw, I, you know, I'm driving down the road and they, you know, they dispatch calls and says they got a, you know, injury accident down there on 54. So I roll on down there and, and they had drive and you'd have to see where it's at. Big old straight, long stretch of road. You know, one of those ones where you see the white cross and you go, how do they ever get killed out here? And uh, four lane highway, big grass median, probably 40 feet between the 50 feet between the roadways. So they got 10 or 12 feet on the right lane. They got two 10 foot lanes and an eight or 10 feet on the inbound lane. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, rumble yeah. strips, rumble strips on the fog lines on both, you know, and they, I guess they'd went to sleep. They'd been out partying all weekend and had to get to work. They were pouring concrete down here at the lake. And, and I guess they just went to sleep early in the morning like that, you know, 6.30, 6.45, something like that. They got on the rumble strip on the one side, and they drifted way over to the almost the grass in the median to the left, and then drifted back, crossed the rumble strip, and got the right two tires off on the dirt in the gravel. You track what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And this is taking a quarter of a mile or better to do this big swooping, you know what I mean? So they swooped all the way to the left to the yeah. median and then all the way back to the right. Yeah, and I'm assuming the... he's still asleep and he's subconsciously doing this because I don't know why any – because it, he's he's swerving so bad, it's leaving enough of a faint wheel mark that we can track that back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So those tires are making noise. He gets on that gravel past the rumble strip on the right-hand side, and I guess that woke him up. And there's a there's a road that intersects there, and it's got a little, uh, it's like a little T intersection. You know, gravel road empties out onto this four lane, and it's got a crossover in the middle. And he 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 jerked the wheel right about the time he got to that T intersection, and he was sideways across it. He was skidding sideways across it, and then when it ran out of gray, it ran onto the grass on the opposite size of gravel, it tripped and started rolling side to side. Oh. And one of them flew out. I don't remember which now. One of them flew out, but they had in this hatchback or in this little station wagon, they had all these tools, right? Oh. They had all these all these yeah. tool belts and hammers and, and saws and concrete stakes and just all this stuff. Oh, no, man. So one of them was dead in the car, and the other one was flipped out, out in the ditch, you know, dead. And the one boy had an odd name. So I'm there, and I'm working the wreck, and then they send another trooper down there, what they call a reconstructionist, and uh, a good dude, and, and he used to call me Biggie, like the rapper. That was my nickname, Biggie. And he goes, oh, shit, Biggie, how are we going to find these kids' parents or whatever? And I seen that one kid's last name, and I said, I'll I'll tell you exactly how we find this guy. And he goes, you know him? And I said, there's only one family with that last name, and it was a, it's an old school, good German uh, uh, name here in town and, and where I'm from anyway. And I drove straight there, me and him. He parked his car at the office because when you do death notifications, there's always two of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he parked his car, got in with me, and I drove straight to this this business in our in the town we lived in, in my hometown. And I walked in, and of course, they know who I am. And, hey, what's going on? And I said, hey, do you know this kid? And they said, oh, yeah, why? His grandpa's, the, the, the grandpa's, like World War II grandpa's, the one of them's still alive at this time. Uh, yeah, that's such and such his grandson, or great-grandson. Why? And I said, well, I got killed out here. Okay, when they and they tell me how to get to his dad. His dad lives way out on the farm in Southern Calgary County. You got to go down the river bottom. Get, they get these crazy directions. This is before people had GPSs and stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, they used to, to tell you. I don't know how I ever got anywhere before. Yeah, they used to tell you, hey, go down there past the Knights, you know, the the <laughs> whatever it was, Knights of Columbus Hall or whatever the hall was in Mo Cain. Go to the second gravel road on the right. Go down there and it tees at the cornfield and take a left. And then the, when you pass the second irrigation ditch, his place is the one up on the right. You can see about a half a mile away. Big plowed fields, you know, like big section fields, you know. Yeah. So <clears throat> we're driving there. And, of course, Kirk, the guy's with me, said, man, how do you remember? And I said, well, I don't. But there's not that many houses down there. You know what I mean? So 
we're driving down this gravel road and it's in the springtime like now. So the fields are planted, but they're not tall. You with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this guy, as we pull in the driveway, he's got a big, long corded phone and he's out on the front porch. Okay. With the phone cord talking on the phone. And I get out, I'm putting my hat on, and Kurt's getting out, putting his hat on. I'm straightening my belt, gig line on my belt up. And, you know, you're going to go drop the bomb on this guy. And he's yelling at us from the porch. And as I'm getting closer, I can hear what he's saying. He said, who is it? He keeps saying, who is it? And I said, well, we're state patrol. And he goes, fuck, I know who you guys are. Who got killed? Oh, jeez. So he knew. Well, as I'm walking up, he goes, dude, I got uh, two brothers and two sons. So it's going to be one of them. Just tell me who it is. And I said, well, it's, I told him his name. And he's, he, he looks at the phone. He, so then he put, because he's got the phone down by his neck when he's doing this, flips it up to his mouth, you know, the mouthpiece to his mouth and says, yeah, it's Junior or whatever the guy's name was. I don't remember what the kid's name was. And Junior got killed. Nope, I shit you not. There's two troopers right here on my fucking porch, man. I told you, I told you, I told you when I seen him coming, because I guess he had saw, looked out the window and seen the plume of gravel and was wondering who's coming up here, you know what I mean, this early in the morning or whatever. And as we got closer, he could tell we were a cop car, not only any cop car, because they see deputies and stuff, but troopers just don't go down, you know, six miles on the gravel like that. <clears throat> and I guess he was telling whoever he was on the phone, I forgot who, and and he said, yep, somebody must have got killed, so who was it? Isn't that crazy? I don't know. I got on that one. Wow. <laughs> well, that kind of, I guess we can, cl we can close on the Memorial Day episode. Yeah, well, them, I guess if you want to close it out like that, that's a shitty yeah. way of doing it. But Well, tell everybody, hey, be safe out there this weekend. Yeah, you don't know, man. You could you can trip up and get thrown out that quick, you know, instantly. Yeah. So Lights on, know. lights off. Lights on, lights on. Yeah, that's right. Just be safe out there and have a good Memorial Day weekend. You know, we don't want to. Yep. We don't hey, want to get right. Hey, get right with the Lord because you don't know when He's going to call. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. <laughs> God only knows what's hiding